Hello, so this is part two of my military cultural competency series. Uh, the way I'm going to do videos on this page is pretty informal. I'm, it's always going to kind of feel like you're just having a conversation with a dork. And, uh, but they will be categorized into two, two main areas, which is um, either part of a larger series, which I'll identify and link in any post that I make, or uh, just kind of me chatting about things that I think people might find interesting or useful uh, when they are wanting to learn about military culture. Uh, I wanted to clar clarify some things from the last video. First, I said something that made it sound like I didn't want feedback, which is not true. I think I said I was like, veteran family members, I know you're going to be like, boo, boo, boo. But no, I, would, I do want your feedback, especially if you think that I'm saying something that is incorrect from like a technical standpoint, because um, a lot of this is about my lived experience. But if I use a technical term incorrectly or something has changed and I don't know it, please feel free to let me know. Like I'm, I'm happy to adjust and happy to correct correct things that I say. I also haven't lived in the military culture for a long time. I've been out here in the civilian world, so I have changed quite a bit. Uh, and finally, oh, and I'm not a veteran. So like, I want that to be super clear to people, just a brat. Um, so even though I have some mannerisms and, and a lot of my values are pretty much the same, I don't, um, I'm not, not at the same level as them as far as this these behaviors are concerned and um additionally i am not a social worker i was a social work student um i did not graduate i was just about to i was an honors level student i was doing the thing but unfortunately i experienced some trauma in a crisis that led me to um having to put everything on pause for you know the future i don't know i don't know when i'm gonna go back but anyways, or if I even want to. <laughs> but I use that schooling to um, better advocate for my community, for the people that I care about. So, all right. In this last video, we talked about how I believe that bearing, that military bearing is part of what makes it difficult for people to to realize that veterans may need help. And whenever I say veterans, it also applies to active duty service members. Um, not always, but most of the time you can figure it out. <laughs> you guys are smart. Um, so bearing the best way I've seen it described is in this paper by SPC Moody. Bearing forms based on individuals, ideals, traits, confidence, appearance, hygiene, physical fitness, and lifestyle. are all major components of what define bearing. So that is probably the best way I've heard it put. So whenever whenever someone talks about bearing, it's it's like a, just about how the how this person portrays themselves to the world. And um, bearing plays a very important role in the military. It is uh, we always need to remember that. Uh, service members are there to win our nation's wars, wherever they might be, all threats, foreign and domestic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the purpose of this is psychological. You know, of course, there are practical elements to it that 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 have to do with like how you wear gear and things like that. But a, a lot of it is psychological. So it's when you have a good, if you, if you have a solid bearing, um, I said this previously, the, the civilians you protect are going to be much more confident that you've got your shit together and the, um, enemy is going to be intimidated. Like they're gonna, they're gonna think that, you know, like, oh God, they're so confident. Like that's, it's a psychological thing and it's super useful. And, um, yeah, we, we need, we need civilians to support the armed services because, you know, that's where funding for that comes. That's where, you know, that's how, how we're able to, um, continue to, to build, train, and utilize our military. Um, 
So the way this relates to uh, practitioners, because my main focus is always going to be like trying to help people better understand them so they can give them better services. So the, the first thing, this is called the, um, my goodness, what's it called? The mental state examination. I will use state and status interchangeably because I don't know, they basically mean the same thing, but um, I'm going to focus on the areas of the 10 point mental state evaluation that, um, or examination, I, can, I think it's the same thing that uh, relate most, most closely to bearing to kind of help you figure out, to, to kind of help you see how difficult this might be. So um, number one is appearance. Observing a patient's appearance, oh, by the way, I used affect incorrectly in the last video. Observing a patient's appearance can help you identify clues about their mental state. It is important to recognize that if a patient appears well-groomed, this does not mean that their mental state is well. This is super duper important because um, as I said previously, if a, if a, if a veteran is starting to look like really, really shabby to the point where you are concerned, then they're, I would say they're lower. Everything you have to just like compare it to a civilian. You're a civilian practitioner. You're examining a veteran using the same lens that you use for a civilian. Well, their standards for personal appearance are super duper high. Like as a, as across the board, all, all service members. So high, high standards for appearance. And I'm gonna go over that. You're gonna see just how high they are. Um, and then civilians, it's just kind of like whatever they want to do, right? You know, it's, so it's, the bar is like way higher that you have to clear. So they might go down to here and they're, they're really not doing well. And for them to go all the way down to here, uh, you know, we might be approaching FUBAR. Like, <laughs> you can Google what that means. So the point is, different levels. You can't, you can't measure them with the same stick. Let's go down here. Okay, so some of the things that are, that are assessed during these, uh, this evaluation is like type of clothing. Are they appropriately dressed? Um, I think it's actually going to be more helpful to go, to go to goarmy.com and give you a brief overview of how they are expected to look. So this is a very brief compared to the actual guidelines that they have to adhere to, which are, uh, in, in military, there's regulations for everything, 76 pages, 76 pages. And to just kind of demonstrate for you the specific, okay, it's like inch, inches, you are regulated by inches in your appearance. The um, young man that I dated at one point that was in the infantry, when we would go to military balls, he would measure his uniform, like he would measure the medals on his uniform. Um, like, yeah, like it's a freaking millimeter. There's like all these things that they have to follow. Of course, not everyone follows them perfectly, but that is the general expectation. So, Modern guidelines, things have changed a lot since I was last uh, in that culture. Serving in the army requires a well-groomed and professional appearance. The army strives to be as inclusive as possible while making sure every soldier can perform their duties as safely as possible. Appearance regulations are considerate of religious beliefs and many forms of cultural expression. Okay, this did not used to be the case. It used to be like, you all wear the same shit and if you can't, then tough titties. Women in the army, policies for women. Women in the army do not have to cut their hair. Completely shaved or closely shaved hair. That's a bit confusing. I think they mean you're allowed to have that. Um, short or medium length hair. Hair may be worn in a ponytail or braid, but it must not interfere with, interfere with the ability to wear authorized headgear. The military is not where you wanna be if you wanna like personally express yourself. Like, it's not like, <laughs> You're, you're all supposed to operate as a unit, a cohesive unit. And as cool as individuality is, it really erodes cohesion would be the way I believe it would be said. Um, 
obviously you have individual personality traits and stuff like that. You're not just a mindless robot, but as far as appearance is concerned, you really, it's really important that everyone look very similar. Um, hair extensions that have the same general appearance as natural hair. Highlights with natural colors that blend together in a subtle and natural way. Hair dyes, tints, or bleaches that match a natural color. Wigs that look natural. So you can't have any funky colors. There's no, you know, and you can't have like, uh, you can't have like my color hair and then have these big bold blonde highlights. Um, hair worn in multiple styles, such as braided twists or locks with a side twist to secure hair. As long as hair, as long as style is neat in appearance and doesn't impact proper wear of headgear. So that's actually um, a pretty significant change from when I was much younger because uh, I believe there was a big push by black service members, which by the way, a very large portion of our um, armed forces are black. Uh, they pushed because it's like there's some some practical reasons that their hair needs to be a certain way. So they had to really, really push for that. Um, not permitted for women. Hair that interferes with the ability to wear headgear or protective equipment. Dyes, tints, or bleaches that do not match natural hair color. Steel hair picks. I don't know what that's about. Trendy and exaggerated hairstyles, including shaved portions of the scalp or designs cut into your hair. Don't do it. Lose hair <laughs> while in uniform so you can't have your hair down because you do stupid shit like this all day. Extreme or dramatic updo styles while in uniform. Policies for men. Completely shaved or closely trimmed hair. <laughs> um, sorry, okay, I know a lot of guys wear this, but like the worst hairstyle. I, again, this is my personal opinion and I'm so sorry if this is what you choose to wear. I mean, it's not, it's not the worst hairstyle, but it's kind of funny to me, like the high and tight. I don't think... Yeah, like apparently they have very broad definitions of what this is, but the one I know is like everything's almost gone except like right here. Like some of these, there's like trendy high and tights where they're like, that's not what I know a high and tight to be. I know them to be. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um, and then it says like not permitted. Oh, and you guys are allowed to wear hair pieces and wigs to cover baldness or disfiguration. Look at that. Look at that harsh wording. Disfiguration. <laughs> Oh God, I miss it so much. Not permitted for men. Braids, cornrows, twists, or locks while in uniform or in civilian clothes on duty. I don't know why boys can't wear that. That's interesting. Shaved designs cut into hair or scalp. Styled sideburns that taper flare or come to a point. Okay, so when it comes to, to hair, this is, we're just on hair right now. And then again, there's like several pages of how to do your hair, what's not okay, what is okay. <sighs> okay, in that long, long thing. Facial hair. <laughs> Facial hair must be clean shaven while in uniform or on duty. Mustaches must be neatly trimmed, tapered, and tidy. Well-groomed beard may be worn for religious reasons. That is new. That's new. Um, but the mustache, that cracks me up because, and again, this is just me being a brat, like, my dad had this regulation mustache where it's like, you can't go past <laughs> this. And it just, it always makes me laugh. Like the regulation mustache makes me laugh. I'm so sorry. And then we go over um, religious garments. So religious garments, hijabs, turbans, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, kippot. If I'm not, correct me. Or I will correct myself in the comments. Religious headgear may be worn in solid, subdued colors that closely resemble assigned uniforms. You have to blend in. Um, generally black, brown, green, tan, or navy blue. Soldiers wearing a combat uniform may wear a hijab turban or under turban in a matching camouflage pattern. Hair worn under the turban is not subject to general standards, but may not fall over the ears or eyebrows or touch the collar while in uniform. Okay. So then we go back to and we're just talking about hair there. So th what this is all paint, this is painting for you is that they have very strict guidelines to follow when they are in the service. So um, that doesn't just go away once they become veterans. Um, so you might, you might not do 90% of these, you might not adhere to 99% of these regulations, but the 1% is still more put together than a civilian generally. 
and that's like that's that's a very broad statement because in the civilian world things are very individualized but just my personal observation <clears throat> you know if you're someone that's super neat and tidy about your appearance awesome so let's go back to this 10 point exam i don't even know how these ads keep popping up okay so then we have uh, more more elements of appearance that are being examined posture they are taught something called command presence so what this does is when you come into a room so like i don't have a good one like but yeah like command command presence like you come into a room you look like you're doing you know what you're doing now um when i'm walking around and upright I do have a tiny command presence. And what that mis makes people uh, believe mistakenly is that I know what I'm doing. So I think it's a maladaptive, a maladaptive coping mechanism, uh, maladaptive behavior for me. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, no, I have no idea what's going on. And also civilians appear to find it intimidating, which is weird. Um, so they say posture, is their posture closed, slouched or open? Is there any sign of postural instability? So even like they, they can be getting fucking unloaded on, excuse me. See, I only did it once so far. They can be getting unloaded on and they're just like, <laughs> you know, stoic face forward, sitting up and they're not going to be like, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. Gate, here's another issue. So gate is, um, something that's regulated. Like, do you're taught to walk a certain way? Um, now, if you have like a very obviously disturbed gait, then of course, you know, might be going into some neurological issues, but then we get to grooming, self-care and hygiene. Okay. Has the patient stopped looking after themselves recently? My mom could probably be dying in a trench somewhere and she would still brush her teeth somehow. Same thing with my dad. Like they're just like very finicky about their personal appearance for obvious reasons and it's not like there's people who are like oh um oh you know like I care about how I look it disturbs them like the way what I have witnessed is that they 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 feel disturbed when they are not cut cut and clean like they should be or not not up to par they're articulating they might they might be just looking like me right now and they would just be like oh I look like shit and it's like, I'm like, cool, thanks. But they, <laughs> they're articulating that their appearance is slipping based on their um, norm, like the levels that they normally take care of themselves too. So physical health. Has there been a comprehensive physical health? Okay, this is all appearance still. Are there any biological symptoms? Okay, I don't know, that's not really. Are they experiencing any pain? Seems a bit, I don't know how that fits in appearance, but anyways, so that is uh, part one of that why they might appear fine as far as their personal presentation. I don't really know what category to put that in. Feel free to feel free to to let me know what you think how you think that should be articulated, but you know, it's like grooming and posture. I mean, it says appearance, but so we'll just stick it under appearance. So that's how they might appear. And, um, yeah, when you compare it to a civilian, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. It is not going to be anywhere near the same. So there you go. I have, uh, way overdone this video. It's quite long and we'll see if it even posts, but if it does and you manage to bear through it, you're a champion. Thanks for watching.